When nuclear explosions rocked the entire Earth, those who survived faced the threat of nuclear radiation, which wiped out both humans and animals. It was predicted that it would take 100 years for the Earth's nuclear radiation to dissipate. Only a small number of people managed to escape to a space station, known as the Ark, formed by combining multiple stations. They have been living there for 97 years. However, the conditions on the Ark are deteriorating due to overpopulation, leading to shortages of oxygen and food. To prevent population growth, Chancellor Thelonious Jaha decided anyone committing even minor crime is punishable by death and would be thrown into space. But people under 18 are only sent to prison. So now 100 juvenile criminals are being sent to Earth to check if Earth is habitable. Among them is Clark, who is the daughter of Abby, the chief medical officer on Ark, and her father was who once the ship's chief engineer. Clark notices presence of her childhood friend Wells, the Chancellor's son who says he came for her. However, Clark is displeased to see him because her father faced execution on the ship due to Wells' mistake. Unexpectedly, the spaceship malfunctions, losing contact with the space station and facing the imminent danger of crashing onto Earth. In the end, the ship somehow makes it to Earth, but things are not right. Two people die in the crash. They are hesitant to open the door because the air may be poisonous. However, they still open the door. Excitement fills everyone as they step out, having spent their entire lives in the space, everyone is overjoyed. Now, we meet two other characters, Bellamy and Octavia. Clark, however, notices on the map that they landed far from their intended spot due to the crash. Communication with the Ark is lost, but their wristbands confirm their survival to the scientists, except for two deactivated ones, indicating two deaths. A problem arises when Clark and Wells aim to reach the designated location, but Bellamy forms a group that refuses to assist the Ark and rejects going to the bunker. This leads to a confrontation with Wells. Bellamy tells his sister Octavia, admitting that he deliberately committed a serious crime to be imprisoned to be with her. He would face his potential severe consequences. So he plans on breaking the wristband and making people in the Ark believe that they died to radiation, allowing them to live on Earth with supplies from the bunker and start a new civilization. However, Bellamy only shares this plan with his sister Octavia. Meanwhile, Clark, Wells, Finn, and two others proceed toward the bunker. They encounter a deer and are relieved to find living creatures there. However, they soon realize that the deer has undergone mutations due to radioactivity. In the Ark, they make the alarming discovery that the Chancellor has been shot. Abby then begins treating the injured Chancellor. Due to his condition, Abby goes beyond the allowed medical limits to save him. Meanwhile, the guards find out that Bellamy was the one who shot the Chancellor before their descent to Earth, explaining his urgency in mentioning to Octavia about escaping from the Ark upon arrival. Simultaneously, oxygen levels on the Ark remain dangerously low. The Vice Chancellor Marcus Kane devises a plan to sacrifice 300 people on the Ark, ensuring the spaceship's oxygen lasts for an additional three years. If not, everyone faces imminent death. Octavia observes a lake below intrigued. She impulsively jumps into the lake, never having seen such a huge amount of water before. However, a huge mutated snake attacks her, and Jasper intervenes, pulling her out of the water. Then they return to the camp near the damaged ship. By evening, many group members followed Bellamy's request and removed their wristbands, signaling their intention to start a new civilization on Earth contrary to Wells' advice. Wells' wristband was forcibly removed and on the Ark, Vice Chancellor Kane discovers that Abby used extra medicine from the allowed limit to save the Chancellor's life. Kane orders her execution, but the Chancellor Jaha intervenes just in time to save her. Meanwhile, Jasper finds a way to cross the river from above but is attacked with a spear upon reaching the other side. There is someone else on the planet, and Jasper is taken away. In the camp, Bellamy and Murphy seize control of the group's supplies and declare themselves leaders. Clark arrives and reveals the truth, someone here attacked Jasper and took him. The next day, Clark, Bellamy, Wells, and Murphy return to the river in search of Jasper. Bellamy, equipped with a gun from the Ark for self-defense, leads the way. In the Ark, an engineer named Raven repairing the Ark discovers that her boyfriend Finn has also been taken to Earth with the captives. She informs Dr. Abby that people might be deliberately removing their wristbands on Earth, questioning how someone could die so quickly from radiation otherwise. Dr. Abby is encouraged by the possibility that everyone might still be alive down below. In their next meeting, they decide to wait for communication from below for an additional 10 days. If there's no contact, they'll have to sacrifice many people from the Ark to conserve oxygen. Meanwhile, Octavia encounters Monty in the camp, who is trying to fix communication from the Ark. He's worried about his friend Jasper's whereabouts. The four, in pursuit of Jasper, reach a waterfall. Clark is growing closer to Finn, causing Wells to feel upset since he came for the mission only for Clark. While walking, they find Jasper's goggles, indicating he may be nearby. They discover Jasper tied to a tree, treated with natural herbs that saved his life. They bring him back to camp for treatment. 
Abby instructs Raven to repair an old escape port so Raven can go to Earth and establish communication back to Ark or else hundreds of people will be killed. Now, let's go back one year. Clark's father, Jack, discovers that the food and oxygen supply in the Ark will soon run out. He wants to inform the public, but Abby opposes it, fearing chaos and violence if everyone knows the truth. Clark learns about the situation and confides in her childhood friend, Wells, promising to keep it a secret. If the council discovers Jack's disclosure, they might kill him. Despite being the Chancellor's son, Wells agrees not to tell his father or anyone else. However, guards arrive to arrest Jack, ultimately throwing him into space. Clark is imprisoned for safeguarding the secret. She believes Wells betrayed her by informing his father, leading to her father's death, and holds a grudge against him. Now back on Earth, Jasper's condition worsens and three days pass with no improvement. The group considers killing Jasper due to his loud cries keeping them awake. Saving him seems difficult, but Clark is determined to help. She identifies the medicinal plants on Jasper's wounds. Wells, claiming knowledge as a botanist, suggests finding these plants in the water. Finn, aware of a location, guides them to a river. Along the way, they encounter an ancient buried vehicle but decide to leave it and proceed to gather the medicinal plants for Jasper. As they collect the medicinal plants, they spot a dangerous radioactive storm approaching from a distance. The three of them hurry to safety, taking refuge in the same old vehicle. There were others who were gathering supplies. In this process, they encounter a girl named Charlotte. The Chancellor threw Charlotte's parents into space for stealing food, so Charlotte is still furious. The storm arrives and Bellamy shelters Charlotte in a cave while his atom fails to escape. Caught in the storm, he screams in agony. The rest of the group is in camp and the ship manages to withstand the storm. Finn finds an old liquor in the vehicle and all start drinking. Drunk and in fit of anger, Clark confronts Wells. She accuses him of revealing everything about her father to Jack, leading to his death. Wells apologizes again, but he remains silent. In the same time in the cave, Bellamy gives Charlotte a knife, encouraging her to overcome her fear. He declares that he wants no connection with the Ark people who killed his parents. The night passes and everyone leave in the morning. While traveling to the camp, Finn discovers that Wells is hiding a lot from them. Bellamy and the others helplessly watch as Adam suffers in the storm. Unable to save him, Clark decides to end his suffering by killing him. Charlotte observes this from a distance as they approach the camp. Clark starts treating Jasper with the plants from the river. Clark persistently tries to convince Wells that her father, Jack, was killed because of him. After a year, Wells finally reveals that it was not him who informed the council but it was Clark's mother, Dr. Abby. Abby betrayed Jack to prevent chaos on the ship and the council executed him. Wells didn't want Clark to hate her mother, so he kept the truth from him. Clark breaks down upon hearing this, apologizing to Wells. With the plant, Jasper's condition improves and he regains consciousness. Wells, sitting alone, is happy that Clark will stop hating him, hoping she might start loving him. Wells, despite being the son of Chancellor, he came on Earth. However, his happiness is cut short when little Charlotte suddenly attacks him with a knife, seeking revenge for her parents' execution on the Ark. Clark feels profoundly sad in the morning due to Wells' grave. Finn speculates that these could be the same persons who previously attacked Jasper. They must have killed Wells. So, from now on, they should remain in the camp. So they're all working together to create boundary around the camp. They don't know who else lives on Earth and who killed Jasper and Wells. Then Monty says he needs a working wristband to restore communication. Clark gives him her wristband so they can contact Ark. However, Abby is now concerned that her daughter Clark's wristband has also been deactivated. But she hopes Clark would have removed the band herself. The group creates a boundary around the camp. Bellamy and Murphy were both acting inappropriately with the others and forcing them to labor. Octavia and Jasper were roaming around the camp, there they find a knife and choked fingers of Wells. Clark recognizes the knife was of Murphy and she begins to suspect that Murphy may have killed Wells. In anger, she accuses Murphy of killing Wells in front of all because his knife's found near his fingers. That means no one from outside their group had killed Wells. Murphy begins to explain to everyone that he never killed Wells. And his knife was lost for two days ago. However, there was no law under Bellamy's leadership. And now everyone starts beating Murphy mercilessly. And they are now about to kill Murphy. But Clark intervenes and tries to stop them from hitting Murphy. She wanted only punishment rather than killing him. However, Charlotte can't take it anymore accepts responsibility for Wells' death, revealing that she did it because the Chancellor, Murphy's father, had murdered her parents on the Ark. Now, Murphy is furious and states that now they must kill Charlotte for her sins like they were about to kill him. To protect Charlotte, Clark and Finn escape the camp with her. That Ark oxygen is decreasing rapidly. So Abby instructs Raven to finish the escape pot fast. Simultaneously, Finn hides Clark and Charlotte in an underground bunker that he discovered earlier. Inside, they find food supplies, suggesting someone intended to use it as a hiding place, but never made it there. 
Initially angry at Charlotte for killing their friend Wells, Clark wants her to face legal consequences rather than being killed like the rest of the group. However, after some time Clark notices that Charlotte has ran away. Charlotte feels guilty about Wells' death. Charlotte plans to turn herself to Murphy and the group to avoid trouble with Clark and Finn. But Clark finds her before she can turn herself in. Simultaneously Murphy and his group also finds her. Murphy warns if they don't give Charlotte he will kill Clark and Finn. But hearing that save Clark, Charlotte jumps off from the hill and dies. Clark tells everyone that they need rules and laws to ensure survival. Outraged, the group abandons Murphy and returns to the camp. Raven has successfully repaired the escape pod. Now, they launch her to Earth with the mission to confirm if everyone is safe. Monty attempts to contact the Ark using the wristbands, but the last remaining wristbands also gets destroyed. Finn gets outraged that he wouldn't be able to see his family again. Clark comforts him assuring that, at the very least, they have each other. Their bond deepens and they become intimate. Chancellor informs Dr. Abby decision is already made and 300 random people will soon immediately thrown into space. The council has approved this plan and kept secret from the public, with no other option due to the lack of communication from Earth. Meanwhile, Clark spots Raven's ship landing nearby, realizing that someone has come from the Ark to see them. Clark and everyone decides to check if anyone from Ark have arrived. Now at last they would be able to establish communication. But Bellamy decides to destroy its radio. He fears that if the Ark learns Earth is safe, he will be imprisoned for shooting the Chancellor. So he advises everyone that it's unsafe to travel at night and they should wait until morning. Bellamy then sets out alone to find the pod while the rest go to sleep. Octavia, Bellamy's sister, notices him leaving. Bellamy confessed to her, revealing that he shot the Chancellor on someone's orders, a deal that allowed him to travel to Earth and reunite with Octavia. Octavia is surprised by her brother's significant sacrifice for her and lets him go. Bellamy reaches the pod, takes the radio and throws it into the water before Raven wakes up to prevent anyone from contacting the Ark. When the others wake up, Clark learns that Raven was Finn's girlfriend on the Ark and she came to Earth for him. However, Clark has developed feelings for Finn now and has been sleeping with him for the past two nights. Raven faces challenges as she discloses information about the Ark, how the Council plans to kill 300 people so the remaining ones can survive for three years. They attempt to broadcast the news that Earth is safe through the radio, but Bellamy has already disposed of it in the river. When Octavia goes out alone, she senses someone following her and eventually falls down the hill and faints. At Ark, the Chancellor suggests to Kane that he should take over as the post of Chancellor from the Vice-Chancellor. He proposes sacrificing himself along with 300 people to ensure the survival of the rest. However, both Kane and Abby stress to him the importance of remaining on the ship. Since no message from Raven, Abby announced the truth to all the citizens of Ark. Down on Earth, Clark approaches Bellamy and suspects that he might have hidden the radio. She warns him that if a message is not delivered, 300 people on the Ark will die. Raven later informs them that the Chancellor, who was shot by Bellamy, has been saved, meaning that the murder case against him is no valid and he is now protected. Upon learning this, Bellamy is willing to assist. After a brief search, they find the radio in the river, but it presents a new challenge. It is entirely broken after falling into the water and cannot be repaired. The Council initially believed that revealing the truth would cause chaos, but instead, more than 300 people volunteered to sacrifice their lives for the greater good. This surprising response leaves the officials astonished at the extent to which people are willing to do everything for their children. Meanwhile, on Earth, everyone is preparing rockets for launch. The idea is that if the rockets reach Earth's atmosphere, it will signal that everyone is alive, providing a reason not to go through with killing the 300 people. The group launches the rockets into space, but unfortunately, it's too late. Tearfully, the 300 people are killed with poisonous gas before they can get any signal. Abby and Chancellor Jaha are heartbroken and sad that they had to sacrifice innocent lives. Suddenly, they notice rockets being fired above Earth's atmosphere. Now, Octavia, who had fainted, becomes aware of a mysterious man staring at her, likely one of the few people who have been living on Earth for the past 100 years. Everyone in the camp is saddened because they couldn't send signal on time. Clark is furious with Bellamy because he broke the radio resulting in more than 300 lives being lost on the Ark. Bellamy apologizes, but now they can't change what happened. In the camp, amidst the sorrow, Clark, Finn, and Raven find themselves in an awkward triangle. Meanwhile, Bellamy, dealing with the absence of his sister Octavia, forms a team to search for her in Forest. From where it is now shown in flashbacks how Bellamy's mother illegally gave birth to Octavia on the Ark because having another child on the ship was not allowed. Due to this, Octavia spent the first 16 years of her life confined to her own room. When one day Bellamy took the risk and brought Octavia to a party, the commander learned about her and he killed Bellamy's mother and expelled Bellamy from his job and imprisoned Octavia. When these 100 people were being sent to Earth, he offered Bellamy the chance to meet his sister in exchange for killing the Chancellor for her. 
Yes, just to meet his sister and keep her safe on Earth, Bellamy, following the commander's orders, shot the Chancellor. There was a bigger plan behind killing the Ark's Chancellor, which hasn't succeeded yet. In the present, Octavia's eyes open in that same cave, and she finds that the man had applied natural herbs on her, and now she is getting better. But she had to get out of there, so she digs and comes out of the cave, running towards her camp. By now, the rest of the people were following Octavia's signs and approaching the cave when, moving forward, they see many people's skeletons hanging in the forest. Meaning, the people who were living on Earth have become quite violent. Out of fear, now many people return to the camp, where only Bellamy, Finn, and Jasper continue their search. In the forest, as soon as morning comes, Bellamy's companions are attacked by the same people they were running from. But by now, their two companions had already been killed where Octavia is heading back from. She sees her brother, but the man who brought him here catches her before she can reach him. He takes her to the same cave, and at that moment it seemed impossible for everyone else in the forest to survive because they were surrounded by the people referred to as the grounders from all sides. Just when it felt like there was no escape, a sound of some kind of horn is heard in the forest. This causes all the people to retreat, and Bellamy finally manages to follow that man and reaches to his location. He quickly makes him unconscious and frees Octavia. While Bellamy was about to kill him, Octavia stops him and says that maybe he doesn't want it to hurt her, and he had saved them all from the grounders in the forest. But now, that man wakes up and stabs Finn in the stomach, and everyone quickly returns with the injured Finn to the camp where both Clark and Raven were quite saddened to see Finn's condition as both of them loved Finn. By now, they had also managed to build a radio. So, in order to save Finn, Clark finally decides to talk to her mother Abby because her mother was a doctor. Quickly, both of them make contact with the Ark Station and all the truths of Earth are revealed to them. It turns out that it's not safe here anymore, so all the people from the Ark can now come down. Upon hearing this, a wave of joy sweeps through the entire Ark Station. This means that finally, after 97 years of exile, they can go back to their home, to Earth, and live in the open. However, they are also saddened to learn that the sacrifice of those 300 people was unnecessary. The families of all those who died were angry at Chancellor for making that decision. Meanwhile, Clark now reveals the truth to her mother Abby that she knows her mother was the one who killed her father intentionally, and she will never forgive her for it because she loved her father dearly. During the conversation, the Chancellor learns that his son Wells has been killed down on Earth, which adds to his grief, and he leaves in sorrow. Now, following Abby's instructions, Clark starts treating Finn, but they discover that foam is coming out of Finn's mouth. Meaning that the knife had poison on it, so they now start torturing the same grounder they had brought unconscious from the cave, hoping that he would tell them the antidote for the poison. Otherwise, Finn would die. Meanwhile, Octavia discovers that there is a drawing of hers in the grounder's diary, meaning that he had been following her for several days and had refrained from harming her. So, she decides to talk to him alone. Grounder spoke a language somewhat different from theirs, but Octavia can easily understand him. He introduces himself as Lincoln and explains that 97 years ago, when people on the ships couldn't survive on Earth, they started living in underground caves. For many decades, they survived by hiding from the radiation and living off insects and worms in these caves. When radioactivity decreased on Earth and they saw people coming down from the sky, they thought those people were there to make them slaves. So, now, Grounder's groups are attacking them. Here, Octavia, to save Finn, willingly subjects herself to the poison. Finally, Lincoln gives her the antidote, saving Finn's life. After this, Bellamy reveals to everyone on the Ark that the commander ordered him to shoot Chancellor, and he has information about a secret plan. Upon hearing this, Kane immediately arrests the commander and puts him in jail. They announce to everyone that they will come down soon, but until then, they have to go to a bunker nearby. From where they can get some food and supplies to defend themselves against the grounders. So, Bellamy and Clark go to that bunker, collect all the weapons and bring them back to the camp, distributing them among the people. This way, they can defend themselves in case the grounders attack. Meanwhile, there was a big secret on the Ark that the Chancellor had been hiding from the rest of the Ark. He reveals to the Council the biggest problem they are facing. In reality, they only have one dropship left to bring down only 700 people while the population on the Ark is over 2,000, which means that more than 1,300 people will never make it to Earth because 97 years ago, there were not so many people on the Ark. But over time, their population kept increasing and now they don't have enough dropships to bring everyone back to Earth. Also, they cannot land the Ark on Earth because its mass is too high. Now we see Councilman Diana goes to meet the imprisoned commander. Here, it is revealed that the person who was behind manipulating Bellamy and causing the shooting was Diana, who used to be the Chancellor of the ship before. But the present Chancellor was considered a better leader, so she was demoted and that's why she wanted to get rid of the Chancellor and become the leader of the Ark again. To avoid suspicion, she also has the commander in jail killed. On the other hand, she had gathered a group of people in secret ship who considered Diana their leader and supported her, and now she tells them that there is no point in staying on the Ark anymore because only 700 people can go down. 
So, Diana decides to steal the shuttle with only her people and make the decision to go to Earth alone without anyone knowing and leave everyone else in space to die. Meanwhile, despite having weapons in the camp below, Finn is not happy with everyone. He tells Raven that they should talk to the Grounders instead of fighting among themselves. For this purpose, he approaches the Grounder, Lincoln, whom they had captured. Finn tells Lincoln that they will release him, but he needs to arrange a meeting with his leader so that they can avoid fighting each other. Lincoln agrees, promising to take them to his leader. However, he warns that they should not bring guns with them to avoid being seen as enemies. So, Finn conveys this information to Clark and she suggests talking to the Grounders without any intention of fighting. Clark shares this plan with Bellamy who was already angry with the Grounders for killing their people. Bellamy decides to take a gun with him for backup in case the Grounders attack Clark and Finn. Meanwhile, up on the ship, the rest of the people are celebrating the news of returning to Earth with the Chancellor. Suddenly, there are big explosions on the ship and many people are killed. It turns out that Diana is causing chaos to distract everyone and she plans to escape Earth with her loyal followers using the escape shuttle. On the other hand, Chancellor is left shocked and unaware of Diana's betrayal. Furthermore, no one had any idea and they believed that these explosions in the Ark might be due to some technical malfunction. Meanwhile, Diana had finally reached the escape shuttle with her comrades, attempting to bypass its security and launch it towards Earth. On the ground, following Lincoln's advice, Finn and Clark were heading to meet the leaders of the Grounders. Unaware that Bellamy, Jasper, and Octavia were trailing behind them with guns for backup. After a while, they reached the Grounder leader, Anya, accompanied by her guards. Clark, now understanding their language to some extent, questions why they attacked when they could understand each other to a certain extent. Anya explains that they thought the people from the sky were here to enslave them. She reveals that the rockets they launched the previous night were meant to signal the Ark, but they fell on their caves, causing many casualties and leading to the morning attack out of anger. Clark, having clarified the misunderstanding, now comprehends that the intention behind leaving the rockets was different. Before Bellamy and Jasper, who had been following them, could be seen, they witnessed some grounders targeting Clark and Finn from the trees, assuming that they intend to harm them. Without understanding the situation, Jasper impulsively shoots two guards, triggering a full-scale fight between the two groups. Thus, Jasper's mistake escalates the conflict even further. Now the Grounders will surely launch an attack on them and Finn was angered on Clark, Bellamy and the rest because, due to their previous action to take the gun to the Grounders, they were now bound to face an inevitable Grounder attack. To survive, they needed to prepare for defense quickly. Meanwhile, up on the Ark, Chancellor and the others finally locate Diana. She had locked herself with her companions in the escape shuttle which they were attempting to open from the outside. If Diana and her companions managed to escape, the survival of everyone else would become nearly impossible. The entire ship's food supplies for the Ark were stored in that pod. In just two days after they leave, hunger would claim the lives of all. However, Diana had locked it from the inside and she had already initiated the process to launch the shuttle to land it on Earth. In this critical moment, technical problems arose in the shuttle that needed repair. Consequently, the shuttle started descending towards Earth at an unusually high speed visible to the entire camp from a distance. As a crash below, causing a massive explosion, everyone rushed to witness it. They found that the shuttle had crashed and there were no survivors. Diana had betrayed the Ark, thinking she could save herself and her companions. Unfortunately, she forgot that the shuttle had been dormant for the past 97 years and still required repairs. Now, the people trapped on the Ark would pay the price for her betrayal. Meanwhile, below, as they searched for supplies, they discovered a highly flammable liquid that could have exploded at any moment. They quickly returned to the camp with the essential items. In the camp, numerous people were stationed with guns because they knew the grounders would inevitably attack. Here, Bellamy, Clark, and Finn started making plans with everyone on how to survive the grounder attack. Though they had guns, they didn't have enough ammunition to eliminate all the grounders, so Finn suggested the idea of blowing up the bridge, the entry point, for the grounders to buy more time for preparing weapons and devising additional plans. Meanwhile, Raven, an expert among them, quickly went to the crashed shuttle and gathered the highly flammable liquid. She combined it with the remaining gunpowder, creating a large bomb that could successfully blow up the bridge. Bellamy was skeptical about this plan, fearing that if it failed, they would lose their gunpowder and the grounders would retaliate. Nevertheless, Raven, along with Finn and Jasper, swiftly placed the bomb on the bridge. However, as the grounders approached from the front, Jasper initially missed his shots but eventually managed to shoot the bomb, causing the bridge to explode. This meant that it would take the grounders more than 24 hours to reach them. While Raven was making the bomb, she got injured, but Finn took care of her. Meanwhile, preparations for the second grounder attack were underway, but their ammunition was critically low. They needed to find a way to eliminate the grounders together. However, after the Ark's escape shuttle left, everything came to a halt and the controls were malfunctioning due to the explosions resulting in the deaths of numerous people. Moreover, they didn't have much food left. In fact, their chances of survival were quite slim and now, instead of Earth it seems they will die in the space station. 
Chancellor gathered all the remaining people, giving them a final speech. He revealed that the ship had a massive oxygen leak due to the blast and they only had 51 hours of oxygen left. Unable to descend to the ground, they have to spend the remaining time with their families. Although Kane refused to accept defeat, he, along with the other engineers, tried continuously to fix the Ark's control room. They hoped to find even a small chance for survival. Meanwhile, preparations were underway in the camp below to defend against the impending grounder attack. Tracks were laid down to impede the grounders who were getting ready for an assault. However, the problem remained they had very few bullets left. In the midst of these challenges, Raven was unloading her shuttle when her attention was drawn to the same liquid on her shuttle. It struck her that they had forgotten amidst all these problems that they had descended from similar shuttle and the liquid in this shuttle might be similar to the one in the shuttle that crashed. Now, they had a glimmer of hope. Raven, collaborating with others, started creating a large bomb using the same liquid. Up on the Ark, Chancellor, before facing his impending death, was watching videos of his son's childhood and reliving old memories. Meanwhile, he stumbled upon a video where young Clark was explaining that if thrusters were fired from the Ark, Ark could have chance of survival. This gave Chancellor an idea and he hurried to share it with the others, the possibility of dropping the entire Ark into Earth's orbit. Similarly, since very few people were left alive, they gathered in the central compartment. So, during the landing, by the time the other sections of Ark breaks apart, they would have already landed. This was their last chance because death was inevitable and attempting to die while trying was the only option left for them. Then on Earth, the plan was made that when the grounders come to kill them, they would let them enter their camp. Once they will be all inside, they would detonate a massive bomb and they will hide inside the bunker. Since the bunker was designed for space, the bomb's impact wouldn't affect it and they would all survive. On Ark, Chancellor explained to the remaining people that they needed to gather in the central part of the ship where danger was imminent and there was a high likelihood that they would all die. But now they discovered that the ship's automatic controls were damaged by the explosion. One of them had to go to the control room in the center of the ship and launch the station to Earth. Whoever went there would meet their end. Kane decided to go for the sake of the others. However, as he was about to leave, they found out that the launching process had already begun. Everyone realized that Chancellor had secretly gone to the control room and chosen to die for the rest of them. Meanwhile, in the camp below, they had fitted the bomb outside the bomb shelter. By now, the grounders had reached them and they initially fired shots to make it seem like they were following their plan. However, surprisingly, the grounders didn't enter. They weren't as foolish as they seemed. To trap them and appear vulnerable, Bellamy starts advancing further. He and his sister Octavia had now suffered significant injuries. However, their plan had worked and now the grounders perceived them as weak, making their way inside. According to the plan, as soon as they entered, everyone rushed into the shelter and Jasper quickly blasted the bomb. The explosion was so massive that all the grounders outside were killed. Clark opens the door, revealing that everything outside had turned to ashes due to their blast. In the control room above, Chancellor finds out that their plan has finally succeeded. The main part of the Ark where the remaining people were seated had safely landed on Earth. Abby, for the first time, steps outside, witnessing nothing but greenery as far as the eye could see with the opportunity to build a new home. She updates Chancellor about everyone. She acknowledges that though he will never be able to see all of this, he fulfilled his duty as a leader. Chancellor, before facing death in space, toasts to the Ark's name one last time. Just then in Earth, Clark and her friends are captured by some humans who equipped with very high-tech gun. When they wake up, they are in White Room. Who are these people? With this, the story concludes. If you enjoyed the series, please let me know in the comments. Also, stay tuned for another fantastic sci-fi series coming soon to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.